This is video two for the beginner's guide to CNCing a guitar. We're going to use our new quarter inch extra long roughing bit to carve and then assemble this beautiful piece of mahogany into a functional string bending cord chewing noise making rock star. One of the parts I found tricky in the first guitar series was having bits that were long enough to cut all the way through the material we used. I had to come up with some wonky workarounds to make that happen. Well, no more. One of the biggest reasons for doing a second guitar video was to show off our new extra long quarter inch roughing bits. These things allow you to go all the way through the guitar blank without any wonky workarounds. I've got them linked in the description below. You've worked out all the kinks. You've measured each part a dozen times, maybe two dozen for me. You got your vectors and your G code file saved. Now it's time to test it all out. Expect mistakes here, folks. That's why we do tests. So if one or multiple mistakes happen, take some notes, make some tweaks, and try and try again until you nail it. Load up those G-code files you created in video one, slap that test material down like you slap at the bass. I slap the bass big time. Slap the bass. Slap at the bass. Slap at the bass. Start the job and sit back and let the excellence happen. Start with that rigid foam I talked about in the first video. It's cheap and it doesn't beat on your bits and it'll get you the experience you need with index holes and flipping. This might be a good time to check out the Basics for a Beginner Bit Change video if you're not very comfortable with bit changes. There's gonna be a couple of them in this project, so you may as well get used to them. And while you're there, throw up one of those thumbs up and the dingy bell, ding. We'd be thrilled if you joined our 10,000 plus other subscribers to stay in the loop. After you've got your files and tests really dialed in and you're feeling confident, then it's time to bust out that fancy piece of bois that you've been waiting to carve up. Take a deep breath. Center yourself. There's no $10,000 grand prize for getting it done in two minutes. Trust me, I was apprehensive about hitting the start job on this mahogany as well. Whenever you want. I don't want it. <laughs> no one wants to waste money. Don't worry, you have done your test. This is gonna be epic. Uh oh, don't break stuff. Oh, look at that. I bled some super glue into the mahogany. Boom! One finished guitar body ready for... finishing. <laughs> now it's time for everyone's most hated thing to do, except me, sanding. I get why people hate sanding. It's a time sucker. It makes a mess. So I avoid the really unnecessary sanding as often as I can. But for me, at least, I find sanding cathartic. It allows me to zen in to put the final uh, shape and contour on that piece of wood. The long mill does the heavy lifting for me, but now I get to give it some soul. I will say that I could have done a bit better job on the allowance offset when I was carving this body. To be totally honest, two things affected this. One, foam doesn't show the lines nearly as clearly as the wood does when I was testing, so they were a lot harder to see. Two, for the wood version, the angle of the lighting was actually hiding how kind of ugly the finished profile cut was, so we didn't really see it while we were cutting it. It wasn't until we pulled the body off the wasteboard and saw how liney it was that we realized we could have done a better job on that. So, you know, take that note. For a one-off project, not a huge deal, but if I was doing multiple or production line style, the lines would be super annoying. The good news is the fix is fairly straightforward. Doing a few tests with scraps to really dial in that allowance offset to get rid of those unsightly lines. Wood grain filler. I did not do this on the Tele build, but it doesn't bother me in the least. However, I like comparing things and I wanted to see how much of a difference it would make on this one. If you're not familiar with wood grain filler, it does just what it says it does. It fills in the grain or tiny gaps in the wood. I experimented with glue and sawdust, but I found it was just a bit of a mess to sand off. If you sand too early, it gums up your sandpaper, and if you sand too late, it is really hard to sand off. This filler I got was easier to sand than glue, and it was specifically color matched for mahogany. It did a pretty decent job of filling in all those tiny gaps to make the surface look nice and smooth. Was it worth doing? I would say it's probably way more noticeable if you're doing a glossy clear coat, but because I'm using a natural, almost matte finish, it's not nearly as obvious. Truthfully, I like both finishes, but for the amount of work required and the finish I'm using, using the grain filler wasn't really worth it for me. Now on to stain. I debated if I wanted to leave this thing natural or if I wanted to stain it. Clearly I decided to stain it. I busted out some test pieces of the mahogany and decided I like this aged barrel stain the best. Shocking that I like something vintage looking. It seems to be my ammo these days. After sanding, filling, cleaning off the body, I applied the stain with a rag, let it sit for a couple of minutes and wiped off the excess. The neck that we are using came pre-made, so it came with a, like a poly finish on it already. Uh, I took some 220 grit sandpaper, sanded the clear coat off, just the front of the headstock, and stained it to match the body. I could have done the entire neck, but that was way more work than it was worth in my opinion for what we were going to see, so I just left it the, the back of the neck as is. Trusty old Ligna for the finish again. It's so easy to use. Wipe on, wipe off. 
done. It is one of my favorite finishing products. We're not sponsored by them, I just really enjoy the simplicity of use. I'm typically a big fan of the matte looking finishes, and so far Ligna has yet to disappoint. Because we bought the parts that we needed for this build, assembly is fairly straightforward from here on in. I'll include the instructions that came with the parts that I bought online in the shared files, um, but to be totally honest, I'm not good at following instructions on a good day, and there's not even pictures in there. I would totally fail if I tried to follow these. I need to find the hole locations for the back of the neck through the body with the plate that came with the kit. You have to do, I have some measurements on there to tell me where I want it to be. We're looking at something roughly about there. Drill press time. It's important that the holes in the body for the neck allow the screws to pass through without threading in. You want the screw to thread into the neck itself, otherwise when the neck and the body are screwed together it won't be as tight a fit as possible. Put the neck in place and use the body holes as a guide, and then mark on the back side of the neck with a screw, drill bit, or a punch. So you're going to measure your neck screws and you're going to pre-drill the holes in the body, then you need to pre-drill the holes in the neck. Like I just said, you want to make sure that you're using a bit that is a little bit smaller this time, for the pre-drilled holes in the neck because you want these screws to bite into the neck, not the body. So we're gonna go do that now. A piece of tape on your drill bit is a good visual guide for depth. Next up, the long drill bit for the pickup and ground wires. The long drill bit is going to allow some sh more shallow angles so that you don't have to worry about drilling through the body by accident. Luckily, I haven't done that yet. Drill the holes so you can feed the pickup wires into the control cavity and the ground wire from the harness to wedge beside the tailpiece post. We are going to use the control cavity plate that came with the kit to just basically mark out the holes that we need to drill out. So this is yoink, 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 and yoink. Easy peasy. I'll screw the plate down after I finish installing all the parts and tested everything out. Tuning keys are pretty straightforward. Plug them in the holes in the pre-made neck, screw them down, and you're pretty much done. That was so much easier than building a neck from scratch, I can't even tell you. The strap buttons are pretty simple. Find the center for the back one and, you know, put a mark there and screw it in, done. For the top one, you have to decide if you're going to go like Tony Iommi style and have it on the top of the horn or some other variation. I put mine in the back of the top of the horn because it, visually and, you know, it just felt like that would be a good spot to put it, so that's where mine is. Time for pickups. Slide the wires through the holes and tuck the pickups in their new comfy home. Uh, you might want to use the pick guard to help line up the pickups. Pre-drill and screw them into place. They're done. Grab the wiring harness and your soldering iron for all of the control cavity parts. If you're unsure of what wire goes where, there are lots of good diagrams out there to help you out. I put the instructions that I used in the shared files link. Poke all the stems through the holes. To help hold things in place, thread the nuts on the knobs. Easy peasy. Make sure you've got the correct pickup wire going to the correct pot. Wire and solder away and they're ready to go. Grab the tailpiece and the bridge posts. Use a piece of wood or a rubber mallet to uh, tap them into place, being careful not to mar them too much. Mm, not too much at all. Being careful not to mar them. And while you're doing that, don't forget to wedge that ground wire between the posts. Oh, you know what though? What the funk? We have a major issue right now. Why? <laughs> I took the measure. I took the dimensions. I apparently did not take the measure and the dimensions. This is a major issue. So you can see from this part of the video that Scott made a mistake. I even posted about it online. Uh, I drilled the holes for the tailpiece posts in the wrong spot. There's a lot of moving parts. I made a mistake. It happens. Luckily, I was able to grab some of that scrap mahogany, cut out a couple of plugs, plug the holes, glue them in there, and we were back to where we should have been, and then I just re-drilled those tailpiece post holes, and you can't even honestly tell. I will be totally honest, we did have some electronic problems with the pickups from the kit that we bought. However, Solo was absolutely incredible about walking me through to figure out what the problem was and getting me a replacement pickup literally the next day. So I have nothing but good things to say about that, even though we did have a little, you know, bump in the road. Install those four neck screws. Having the neck clamped to the body can help free up a hand uh, and keep the neck in place while you're screwing them in. And that actually looks freaking awesome. Ta-da! We are ready to put our pick guard on our guitar now. Pre-drilling is not super necessary because these screws are... They're pretty tiny little guys. However, one tip that might come in handy for those that have not done this before is when you are, sorry, before you're screwing in your pickups, you may want to use your pick guard as a bit of a guide just to make sure these are squared up the way they're supposed to be. Otherwise, you may end up having to file your pick guard a little bit, which let's be honest, 
it's not a big deal if you have to do a little bit of tweaking, but if you can use it to help you out, why wouldn't you? Install the screws and your pick guard is done ski. Add some strength to this monster, tune it up, and you are ready for its inaugural test run. Plug it in, turn the volume to a million, and play something that rocks. <laughs> Assuming the electronics worked as they should, screw the control cavity plate on right about now. I haven't played in so long. There you have it, another guitar finished and ready to destroy eardrums. I will be the first to admit that this guitar was way less stressful than the first one. Is there a lot to know to make your own guitar? Of course there is! You're making a guitar, not a walking stick. However, with a little determination, I promise the result is totally worth it. Does being able to make my own guitar mean that I wouldn't love to own a Gretsch Signature Falcon Billy Duffy edition? Absolutely not! But being able to make my own guitar certainly has a cool factor for me that none of those other mass-produced guitars can touch. We have so much awesome content coming up for all you lads and ladies. If you're enjoying what's happening in our little corner of internet land, please give us a like and a subscribe to keep in the know. If you've got something you think we should know about, leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you too. Until the next bit of fun, we'll see you around the CNC. Mmm.